we're going to do a couple of examples of the chain rule. Now the chain rule applies to a layering or a composition of functions like we've got in this example. So in this example, our outer function is the cosine and the inner function is that x squared plus one. Now when we apply the chain rule, we've got to do it in a really particular order. We're gonna take the derivative of the outer function with respect to the inner function. You're gonna see what that means in just a second, and then multiply that by the derivative of the inner function with respect to x. Leibniz notation, which is what we've got right here, is so nice because those derivatives of g cancel out and we're left with exactly what we wanted, the derivative of the function with respect to x. Let's go ahead and apply it to this example. Now I know that I wanna start by taking the derivative of my outer function. Following that chain rule really carefully, I wanna take the derivative of cosine first and the derivative of cosine is negative sine. But I'm gonna do that with respect to the inner function. So I'm gonna leave that inner function unchanged. I'm just gonna write x squared plus one. Now I'm done with the cosine, I can even just cover it up, and I'm ready to multiply this by the derivative of x squared plus one. The derivative of x squared plus one is two x. And I can rearrange things just a little bit and I get negative two x sine of x squared plus one one. Here comes the next one. Here I've got the square root of 3x. My outer function for the chain rule is that square root symbol, which makes my inner function 3x. Now I really want that square root to be a one half power instead. So instead of the square root, I'm going to replace that with a one half power on the outside and then my 3x on the inside. Here comes my chain rule. I need the power rule then on my one half. So the one half comes out in front and I get a one minus my power, which is gonna be a negative one half up there for the exponent. Now this is with respect to my inner function. So I leave my inner function inside there. Now I'm ready to take the derivative of my inner function. I'm ignoring the square root. I'm ignoring that one half power and I'm just doing the derivative of three X. The derivative of three X is equal to three. Now I've got a little bit of cleaning up here that I can do. I can put the three and the fraction one half together. And I also know that I've got this three X to the negative one half power. So that would be three over two, three x to the positive one half power, moving it into a denominator, which I can write as three over two radical three x. In this next one, we've got three different layers. Can you identify the outer, the middle, and the innermost layer? Well, here's what we've got. We've got the natural log as the outermost function. The next one moving inside those parentheses is my secant and the innermost function is x cubed. So instead of the chain rule for two functions, I need the chain rule instead for three functions. But again, Leibniz notation works really, really nicely here. As I cancel the dgs and the dhs, I've got exactly what I'm looking for. Let's go ahead and take the derivative of that outer natural log function first. Well, that derivative is gonna be one, over whatever the next function is. So g is the secant, and it's really the secant of x cubed. So I'm gonna go ahead and write inside here the secant of x cubed. So that takes care of my outermost function, multiplying that now times the derivative of g with respect to h. I'm done with the natural log, I can cover that up. I'm gonna go ahead and multiply now by the derivative of secant. The derivative of secant is secant tangent. And this is with respect to that innermost function. With respect to means I'm holding it, I'm not changing it, so I get an x cubed inside of that derivative for secant. And then finally, I'm ready to take the derivative of h. I'm done with the natural log. I'm done with secant. I take the derivative of x cubed, and that is 3x squared. Now hang on, because I want to cancel. There's actually some really nice things that I can do here to simplify. For my final answer, I've got the 3x squared times the tangent of x cubed. 
You are doing fantastic. Take a look at this next video. You've got this.